What's the scene, people? This is Matthew, and this is another episode of What's the Scene. And today, I'll be talking about the long-awaited sequel to one of the most popular MCU movies out there. Of course, I'm talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, I can safely say that 2014 was Marvel Studios' biggest year. Not only did they have Captain America the Winter Soldier, which still remains my favorite movie of 2014, but they also had Guardians of the Galaxy, which was a movie that a lot of people were hyped up at the time when it came out. Not everyone knew anything about the characters. We didn't know who Star-Lord was, or Gamora, or Rocket Raccoon, or Drax the Destroyer, or Groot. But after seeing Guardians of the Galaxy, I was blown away by it. I thoroughly loved this movie, and it remains one of my all-time favorite movies in the MCU thus far. So, you know, going in into Volume 2 of Guardians of the Galaxy, of course you have to have a level of excitement, a level of expectation. You know, you want this thing to be bigger and better than before. And was it? Well, before I get to that, let me just jump in into what it's about. So, without spoiling anything, the Guardians of the Galaxy find themselves involved in a mission for these ghoul-skinned aliens who are called the Sovereigns. And after that mission, Star-Lord realizes that his father, played by Kurt Russell, is still alive. His father finds him, and then there's this whole backstory involving the two of them. And at the same time, the other Guardians split off and go into different missions. And somehow it all kind of comes back together at the very end. That's all I'm going to say about that. So the good stuff about this movie, the visuals. Oh my god. Now, first off, I thought that the original Guardians of the Galaxy was probably the most beautiful movie in the MCU, but this one trumps it. This one is arguably the most gorgeous looking, the most beautiful looking MCU movie I have ever seen. The visuals in this movie alone are worth experiencing and seeing on the big screen. And I can imagine that some people, maybe in the next few years, might just get high to this movie and just watch it. And I'll get to that high stuff in a minute. Also too, what really impressed me were the characters. You know, the characters are still well fleshed out, well developed. I love the fact that everybody got their time to shine, they got their little backstory. And most importantly, we cared about these characters. Whether it's Star-Lord or Gamora, or even Yondu, who was played by Michael Rooke. He is given some screen time in this movie. And yeah, eventually you do care for this guy. I mean, at first, he was just this sort of outlaw slash mercenary guy who was hunting down Star-Lord for reasons that I won't get into unless you saw the original movie. But here, he's given some emotion, some backstory here. And you can't help but relate and really understand where this guy is coming from. You really do root for this guy, and that's all I'll say about that. Groot, who's played by Vin Diesel, now is reduced to a baby now. And yes, he is probably the most adorable thing you will ever see in an MCU movie so far. When I went to the screening to this movie, I heard a lot of people going, oh, every time Groot was on screen. He's not just there to be like, oh, he's so cute. He has stuff to do. He's given things to do. The cast is stellar, whether it's Chris Pratt or Kurt Russell, who once again brings an excellent performance to the table. But I felt personally that there was just so much things going on in this movie. It's Star-Lord and his dad. It's Yondu and this person and Rocket Raccoon and that person and all these things going on that at times you kind of think to yourself wait now is this still a Guardians of the Galaxy movie and perfect example is with Drax the Destroyer played once again by Dave Bautista who by the way I felt stole the show from everybody he just had so much comedic presence so much comedic timing I thought that he delivered the best jokes in this movie but here he's just pretty much put aside to the background pretty much trying to make friends with this new character by the name of Mantis. And yes, they do have some funny moments together, but still it's like, it's Drax just there talking to this person. He doesn't have much to do, basically. This is yet another sequel that suffers from sequel-itis, where, you know, the concept is about being bigger and better and more explosive and more action and more comedy. Just really amping up everything that made the first film so great and so memorable. But at the same time, it gets so carried away in trying to be funny and trying to be so visually spectacular and being this and being that, that the story just tends to kind of fall apart at times, you know? You're, you're trying to, to follow what's going on here, but then suddenly you shift over there and then when you shift over there, they take too long there and then you forget about what's going on here. And it just loses focus so much times until it nears the end and then yes i mean it's spectacular it's fun it's action-packed but i just wish personally i could have cared more about what was going on you know there was just so much things going on I was just trying to connect things so by the end of it all you know I, I i enjoyed it for what it was but still i just wish that the story was just a tad bit simpler for me to follow 
And I do imagine, you know, a lot of people just watching this 10, 15 years from now and not really caring about the story so much because it's so complex and so convoluted that you'll just, you know, get high to it and just not care about story. You just look for all these flashy visuals and just not give a crap about what's going on. So overall, yeah, this was not as great as the first movie, unfortunately, but I still had a blast with this movie, so I would give this a decent 4 out of 5 stars. I won't say that this is the best sequel in terms of the MCU movies. I still say that Winter Soldier is the best sequel out there, but I would put this easily as a number two, while the other two would be Thor The Dark World, which I know a lot of people don't really like, but I felt it was entertaining and fun, and Iron Man 2 being the last one, because yeah, while it was fun to see War Machine and Iron Man duke it out, it still was a huge letdown compared to what Iron Man set up years ago. And yeah, that's all I have to say in terms of Guardians of the Galaxy volume 2 so have you guys seen the film did you like it did you hate it did you enjoy this one way more than the first one do you think the first one is still the better of the two and on the subject of mcu movies which one is your personal favorite and which one is your least favorite comment below and let me know and yeah that's all i have to say about that so once again guys this is matthew and like a wise man once told me I'm good. no what's this scene